screaming for the last hour. I think everybody needs to give themselves a big round of applause because this is what a united Los Angeles looks like. And are we united today, sisters and brothers, to say, hands off Syria? I, I want to be very, very quick, but I want to let the people in Los Angeles know, and as John Parker said, I come from the Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Northern Virginia region with the International Action Center. But there are demonstrations all across the country right now. I got texted that people in Times Square were marching today. They had over a thousand people rallying in a packed area in Times Square to get the message out to the people of this country. There are hundreds in Washington, D.C. And then on Monday, you should know that when Congress convened, the Syrian community, along with many of the sisters and brothers in this country, will be marching again from the White House to Congress on Monday. And then, of course, on Tuesday, the struggle is going to continue in Baltimore. I just want to say one brief thing. This government and the Obama administration and John Kerry have put forward a very cynical argument, and that is that the people of this country aren't going to care if it's not our blood that's shed directly. And I want to say on behalf of working people, not only on the East Coast, but also here in Los Angeles, that's not, that isn't true. That we care about our sisters and brothers in Syria. That these young children who are just chanting on the, on the bullhorn, that they represent their sisters and brothers and the young people in Syria who will lose their lives when cruise missiles strike those cities in Syria. So we stand united with the Syrian people. It's a cynical argument. And it's also a wrong argument. Because no, maybe they won't, but maybe they will send troops to Syria and to that region. But even if they don't, it's not like people here won't die. Because every bomb that falls on Syria, just like Dr. Martin Luther King said years and years ago during the Vietnam War, every bomb that falls on Vietnam is a bomb that drops in our cities. In Baltimore City, 25% of the people that literally one out of every four persons lives in dire poverty. We are dying a slow death because the Pentagon and the mil and the, the the Pentagon and the military are draining our cities every single day. Our food stamps are getting cut. Our youth have no jobs. It's fifty six percent of young people without jobs in our city, and I bet you Los Angeles is no different than Baltimore. We are dying a slow death. So no, no, John Kerry, don't tell us that the war against Syria doesn't mean death and destruction right here at home. Finally, I'm going to end with this. We have to make our struggle grow. It's going to take a lot of unity. We saw it today in the streets. We will not let up. If it means sitting in at people's offices, if it means doing what we did in the 60s, then we got to do it again. I'm here not only to stand in solidarity with you, but I'm also here because the, I'm a union trade unionist leader from United Food and Commercial Workers, and the delegates will be gathering really the opening of the Angela CIO Convention. We as trade unionists, and I hope there's many others that are standing here, have to tell our leadership that they have to take a stand against this war, that they have to say no, they have to say hands off Syria, it's not enough to just say a few watered-down phrases. They've got to stand with the working people and the poor people, the youth and the young in this country to say, no, Syria. it's not just Syria. Syria, you're right, it's the Middle East, it's the entire world. They have to say no to U.S. imperialism. I'm just going to end with that and say, tell the truth and stop the lies. Syrian people don't have to die. Tell the truth and stop the lies. Syrian people don't have to die. Tell the truth and stop the lies. Syrian people don't have to die. Tell the truth and stop the lies. Syrian people don't have to die. Thank you, Sherry. We have an entire list of, of speakers that want to share their different messages with you. So up next, we have a um, representative from the School of America Watch. Is that representative from the School of the Americas Watch here? I think they might have left.
Um, we'll look next. Um, we'll have Ku Selzahilo from the International League of People Struggle. Good afternoon, sisters and brothers. This is a message of solidarity for our sisters and brothers in Syria. Because we today are standing and marching with our sisters and brothers in Syria. How many of you are from Syria? Raise your hand. We need to continue fighting in the streets here in the United States because right now President Obama is trying to get away with another war on the people of Syria. This is a war on all peoples of the world. And we have to fight back. I am from the Philippines. We have been fighting back. We are still here more than 100 years later. We know these wars of aggression led by the United States is not the solution. And we know that we can win if we are united in the streets. Just like our sisters and brothers in Vietnam, people here in the United States were in the streets and did not give up fighting for peace. Sisters and brothers, we cannot be afraid to fight for peace. We have to tell the president when we hear any more lies about WMD, we need to say WTF and get in the streets because he is lying and we know the truth. The lives of Americans who have been sent to war. We cannot let their lives be in vain. We need justice. We need to end all U.S. wars of aggression. For people like Chelsea Manning and Edward Snowden, they put their integrity on the line for the people of the world so that no more wars of, of U.S. imperialism would be waged against our people. And sisters and brothers, here in the United States, people are ready for peace and justice. A few days ago, workers from Walmart were getting arrested in Chinatown. A few weeks ago, people were walking out of fast food restaurants. People in the United States are hungry, literally hungry. They're hungry because they don't have enough food to eat. They also are hungry for justice. And for our youth, for our young Syrian brothers and sisters, our Arab American youth who are here today, you are the hope of your families back home in the Arab world. Continue to fight for justice. One day, all our people will be free. No to U.S. wars of aggression. Long live international solidarity. Long live international solidarity. Long live international solidarity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Koo. On the spirit of international solidarity, we'd also like to bring up Carol Francis from the Cuba Coalition. Carol Francis from the Cuba Coalition. Right here. Yeah, I don't have anything compared. I wasn't expecting this. We all know the, um, that the war drives against the United States, against Syria by the United States, are based on lies. Just like the lies about the Cuban Revolution, the Latin American Revolution. Wherever people were standing up and saying, you know, our resources, our people, are for whomever we want to work for, and dedicate our resources for, they're not for some imperialist countries to come in and take over. There we have our solidarity. So thank you. Thank you, Carol. From the Union of Progressive Iranians, we have Diran speaking next. Oreza. All power to the people. All power to the people. I would like to express myself. I'm not demanding Obama to do, to do nothing for us. Obama is not our president. He's representing the 1% rich people. This is it. We have to clear our mind. He's serving the massive, you know, peoples. 
It's not on the side of people. U.S. once again involving itself in military attack in another country. Ask yourself which country in the world from the beginning to the present time has the bloodiest history of genocide, slavery, invasion, coup d'etat in Stalin, and backing brutal regime, bombing, massacres, and mass destruction, including using the nuclear weapon in Japan and Nagasaki. Look at what this system has done to their own people in terms of black people and in terms of, you know, poor people. We have more than any other country people in prison. We are fed up with this system. It's not Obama or it's not Clinton. The whole system is rotten. We have to change it to another system. So we are in solidarity with the people in Syria, in the Middle East, and we say no more war in Middle East. U.S. hands up Middle East. Let's stand up all together in solidarity with the Syrian people. Down with U.S. imperialism. Hands up Middle East! 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 Hands up Middle Stop war in Syria. Stop war in Syria. Stop war in Syria. Stop war in Syria. Syrian people want to say we want Bashar to stay. Syrian people want to say. Syrian people want to say We want Bashar to stay! We want Bashar to stay! Syrian people want to say Syrian people want to say We want Bashar to stay! We want Bashar to stay! Syrian people want to say We want Bashar to stay! I'm sure everybody you listen to KPFK 90.7. We have the best programs every Saturday at 2 o'clock, ready for revolution. We have Didan Kamadi, our comrade, that's all the time standing on the side of people that they are struggling. I'm going to introduce Didan Kamadi, our comrade. Greetings, ready for the revolution. First of all, I want to not only show solidarity, but I've been out on this corner at least four or five times with the Syrian community, Arab American for Syria, protesting on behalf of the Syrian people. I see a lot of familiar faces. So I want to just thank folks for having consistently for the last year and a half been in regular demonstrations here, as well as forums, for instance, in Orange County with former Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney, trying to defend the rights of Syrian people to self-determination. So I can thank everybody for that. Number two, I want to apologize for Pacifica and KPFK because what has happened is that, of course, KPFK is anti-war as a Pacifica. But the problem becomes for two and a half years, most of the drive-time programmers constantly demonize the government of Syria. Constantly demonize, they don't, don't provide a voice for the government, they provide a voice for all these CIA-created, Saudi-created, Turkey-created front groups like the Free Syrian Army, Syrian National Council, all these bogus organizations get prime drive time on Pacifica, on PFK, PFK, as well as other yeah, media. Yeah. And by not supporting the government, the Baathist Party, which has its contradictions, but I tell you this, when I look at the question of women in Syria with the present government versus al-Nusra versus the Salafists, 
when I look at the present government, look how they deal for the question of Christians, Jews, Marxists, Buddhists, other religious Islamic groupings, I have to support the present government much more advanced than the feudal, backward sectarian rebel forces that characterize the opposition. When I look at the quality of life in terms of light manufacturing, industrialization, the fact that Syria is broken for being a, 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 a natural oil or, or dependent upon Western imperialism and fight for economic nationalism. These are principles, or I guide by, I'm guided by the principle of women, national ethnic groups, national religious groups, economic self-determination. But media in general, and Pacifica in particular, always sides with the Western bourgeois analysis, whether it's Libya, which I've lived in and been to many times, and women in Libya, whether it's Zimbabwe, the Cote d'Ivoire, whenever it comes to Western imperialism, defining any country that maintains self-determination, anti-neocolonialism, for whatever set of reasons, a lot of programmers support the bourgeois analysis. But that bourgeois analysis demifying the government of Syria and Bashir sets in motion that what we see today, the bombing of Syria, and all of a sudden everybody says, no, we're opposed to bombing. But for two and a half years, you join in a, in a war drum calling for the overthrow of the government so when the Democratic Party decides to bomb Syria, they all know we're against the war. Well, if you're against the war, you should support the right of the people of Syria to determine their own destiny right. without Western media demonizing and bourgeois progressive media demonizing the leadership that the people of the country make those decisions. I don't want to get elaborated upon it, but I want to apologize for all those programmers, especially drive time programmers, that contributed to the overthrow of Libya, the most advanced country in Africa, overthrow what they're trying to do in Syria, attempting to overthrow Zimbabwe, that provided land to the masses, to overthrow the you know, Cote d'Ivoire, which I've been to, a progressive government that now is run by some French neocolonial Sioux. So I hate to say this, I know some people are upset because they're opposed to the government, but anybody who tell me that the rebels provide a better quality of life for women, for Christians, for Muslims, for Jews, you cannot tell me that, because I already know the history of the Baptist Party and I've studied this for years. Those of us in the anti-imperialist movement monitor anti-imperialist countries. So I just want to close with that. I'm sorry if I've upset some people. I'm sorry if I've upset some people, but as always, we stand ready for the revolution. Thank you. Next we have, from Gabriella USA, Terry. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. My name is Terry. I'm with Gabriela USA, an organization of Filipinas. More than 200 based in the Philippines, but with chapters all over the world. We're here in solidarity with the Syrian people. And we're here to condemn the acts of the Obama administration in their attempts to wage war in Syria. We have to continue to organize and expose that the U.S. is acting alone against the U.N. The U.S. is acting alone against its allies who are condemning what it is doing. We have to realize that the acts of the U.S., even though they're saying supposedly that they're going into Syria to supposedly protect the people, we know that this is a sham and we have to know that this is about profit. That they're trying to go into Syria for its resources and the oil riches that the country has. Just like in many other countries that are waging liberation struggles, the U.S. is not there to protect the people, but to enrich the 1%. Coming from a women's organization, we know that the U.S., when it wages its wars, it has the effects on the most vulnerable of the sectors, which are the women, the children, and their families. Terry likes to say, supposedly, that there will not be boots on the ground. But what does that mean? More drones? where they cowardly kill people that are fighting for the general liberation. Right now, there are many families that are fleeing Syria because they fear the U.S. intervention, just like, like they have done in so many other countries. We must continue con to condemn this. But just as the U.S. continues its warmongering, there are continued people's liberation struggles. There are people throwing off the chains of U.S. imperialism and continuing to organize and fight for their rights and determine them, have their own self-determination. So I salute everybody here for your bravery, for coming out and speaking out against this unjust regime. 
and let's continue to build together until we defeat U.S. imperialism. U.S. out of the Middle East, no justice, no peace. U.S. out of the Middle East, no justice, no peace. U.S. out of the Middle East, no justice, no peace. U.S. out of the Middle East, no justice, no peace. Thank you. You know, every corner of the city we go, when there is a police brutality, when we are defending the prisoner on the strike, Michael Novick, you know, the, our comrade that is publishing this newspaper, he's on the corner defending prisoners, defending the people against the police brutality. I would like to introduce Michael Novick, we are sending this newspaper to the prisoner every three months. We should, we should thank him for the job that he's been doing that. Yes. Yeah, I'm here on behalf of the Intercommunal Solidarity Committee and Anti-Racist Action. I just want to have a few brief words. I think people need to understand that war is the default condition of imperialism. You cannot have imperialism without war. Imperialism means constant war because imperialism is based on conquest, on land theft, on genocide, and it requires war at every minute to maintain itself in power. When the United States wanted this land, this territory that we're standing on right now, when they wanted to expand slavery into, into Mexico where slavery had been abolished, they came up with the pretext. James Knox Polk, the President of the United States, claimed that the Mexicans had invaded U.S. territory. It was a complete lie, but he sent troops and launched the war with Mexico to claim California, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and the rest of the land we're on now. And that takes a constant state of war to maintain. That's why we see the border militarized the way it is. That's why we see the same drones they're using in the Middle East are flying right now in San Diego, and they're being built in San Diego. So this situation of lies to launch wars is a constant factor. And the only way that we're going to end that is if we end this system of imperialism. We need to have an understanding that this is a struggle, a life or death struggle, not just in Syria, but right here, right now. And that they understand very well that there is an enmity between them as a system in power and the rest of us. And we have to understand that it's not a matter of changing a policy or changing a procedure or changing a mechanism. We have to change the system. That means we have to figure out how to have the capacity, the moral, the physical, the mental, and the military capacity to bring the system down because nothing else will do it. Thank you. Very well said. Too many speeches, right? We have one more. This woman right here from KPFK. Do we have her speech? What about me? Oh, okay. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. My name is Paige Graywall, and I'm the, the chairman, chairwoman of the board with um, KPFK. And I work with Brother Didon on his program. And um, I wanted to say thank you to Brother Fernando and Sister Norma from Informativo Pacifica, giving us their amazing Spanish um, journalism news in the evening, making our community powerful and strong. And I'm also a teacher in LAUSD. So making sure that I'm doing my work in the community, please, um, if you have not tuned in to 90.7 FM, please tune in. Have your uh, kids know about it, know that they have a voice, know that there is free speech radio. And um, with uh, Reza and the outreach committee, so thank you all for um, coming out here to support. And um, tune in for you. Invite them to the next board meeting. And the next board meeting will be for the local station board um, Saturday, September 21st. And the location will be announced um, there'll be some carts running about where the location will be. It will be on from air. 1 to 4 p.m. On air. On air. It will be announced. It will be announced on air. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Tesh. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for your patience, for your attention to all the various messages. If this is what a united Los Angeles looks like, then we also need to hear what a united Los Angeles sounds like. And so there are a lot of organizations out here, and it's hot, but we thank you for your patience and for your um, attention. So up next we have um, Rachel from Affirm. Hello, brothers and sisters. We are here representing Affirm, an anti-imperialist transnational women's organization 
because we oppose the interference of the U.S., British, and French allied forces in Syria. Without proper investigation or support from the United Nations, these imperialist powers prop their excuses for war on the alleged use of chemical warfare by the Syrian government. This is just another excuse for this imperialist power to extend their reach and power into other countries and to topple down the forces that oppose them. These are not attacks against chemical warfare. They are attacks of aggression and violence to demonstrate force and domination. As transnational and women of color, we know what a U.S. invasion means. In Iraq, Afghanistan, in our families' countries of origin, Latin America, Asia, Pan Africa. It means that women and children are disproportionately victims of military violence. It means the rape of women and children in addition to the economic and political pillage of entire countries. For us women here in the U.S., we know that this means an increased economic draft into the military, where women experience rape and sexual assault. It means we working, working class women are brought in to fight the U.S. wars that exploit other women overseas instead of diverting our country's financial assets to funding a war machine. We need to focus on funding health care, education, and jobs here at home. Instead of fighting a war and murdering innocent people, what about instead fighting the war on women here in the U.S.? We stand with you all today to oppose the brutal war and any tax on Syria and demand no to U.S. war in Syria. Hands off Syria! Hands off Syria! Hands off Syria! Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Rachel. Um, next, we have Yvonne from Word. Is Yvonne here? Yvonne from Word. Okay, so we also have March Forward Adam. If you are still here and would like to speak, you are up next. We do have a lot of speakers, so we're just going to try to keep the program moving. Um, when you come up and you've been called, we will let you speak. But there are some more uh, groups waiting. So Peace and Freedom Party, Nancy. I'm with the Peace and Freedom Party. Now, how many of you have heard of uh, Cindy Sheehan? You know, the peace bomb who sat, sat down in front of the Bush Ranch. Now, she has gone on. She has left the Democratic Party, and she's joined the Peace and Freedom Party. The Peace and Freedom Party is a socialist, ecological, and feminist party. We are the only socialist party on the ballot here in California. So that's, first, I want you to... Go register. and register the Peace and Freedom Party and vote for the Peace and Freedom Party. And vote for Cindy Sheehan for Governor of California in the next elections. She is against the war. She is against the war in Syria. She's against capitalism. As like the brother said earlier, he says we got to talk about how capitalism is destroying everything. And it's definitely destroying our planet, Mother Earth. That's another issue I want to speak about. we got to also speak about global warming and climate change. We had to have a slogan, no war, no warming. War causes also is another thing that causes global warming and climate changes. Look at Hurricane Sandy, look at everything else. And of course, what we... Yeah, okay, brother, but it's all because there's a, these things are all connected, brother. These things are all connected. Bradley, oh, now um, we have... Um, I uh, forgot her name because she's changed her name because I'm I was, you interrupted me, brother. You know. Hey, don't interrupt her. From y'all. Um, Freedom of speech, right? Right. Yeah, don't be rude. Yeah. But anyhow, we had um, um, uh, Shirley, or what's her name? She changed her name uh, from Bradley Manley to. Um, Chelsea, 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 Chelsea Manley. Okay, Chelsea. Chelsea Manley was a vet. Is a vet. And she had the courage to tell the truth. So we had to connect all the issues of veterans, homeless people, um, ecological concerns, feminine, the woman, uh, issues of uh, sexism, 
homophobia, all these things are connected with the war machine and with capitalism and imperialism. So anyhow, please rest in our peace and freedom party. Thank you. When, when is Shabiha? Shabiha! How are you on? Shabiha! Allah, Surya, Basharu Bas! Allah, Surya, Basharu Bas! Allah, Surya, Basharu Bas! Allah, Surya, Basharu Bas! Allah, Surya, Bashar! Allah, Surya, Bashar! Allah, Surya, Bashar!